Hello world, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Advance Wars Bioweb Replay Review, my ongoing series where I search through the completed Global League games and find interesting and noteworthy games to cast for you. We got another great episode today, another one versus one Global League Fog of War match between Einpunkt and Havoc. Up in the north here, we have Einpunkt, Global League rating 984.79 playing as Sonya and representing the Orange Star Nation. And down in the south, we have Havoc, Global League rating 994.36, playing as Lash and representing the Blue Moon Army. Today's match will be taking place on the one versus one map, Lifeline GL. This is a rather interesting map, as you can see here, both players start with 27,000 in units in the form of two black boats, and a defensive lander on their HQ here. Orange Star gets the first turn in the north, and down in the south, Blue Moon gets an infantry for their first turn advantage counter. It's a very unique map, and this is a very back and forth game, so let's see just how it plays out. So starting us off in the north, day one turn one is Ein Punkt. Very standard infantry opening, of course that's to be expected, but pay attention to where the players move their black boats. Whereas most maps, the only thing you can really do in the beginning is build some infantry for the first couple turns, but this map does allow you the unique opportunity to move your black boats around and transport units around the map in a rather unique fashion. So we'll see just exactly what each player does here, what their capping order is, and where it begins to diverge. Now Havoc obviously using that first infantry to capture that middle factory just as quickly as he can. Now he's already got that capture in there. And cap orders are already diverging a little bit. You can see uh, Sonya going for these properties first here and skipping past this one where Lash is already going here. But Sonya has developed an early infantry out to the front with their black boat, which is going to give them a little bit of a more forward observation area. And Sonya, with the extra vision, will actually be able to see across the river rather easily here. Blue Moon now deploying their troops a little farther forward. But whereas Blue Moon has one infantry here within range of the comm tower, it actually looks like Orange Star has two infantry and will begin to capture the property before Blue Moon has even begun to capture the comm tower. Now Blue Moon actually does have an advantage in terms of captures. They have 8,000 of income compared to Orange Star's 7,000. And a recon on day five actually built day four out of Blue Moon. However, Orange Star does indeed have a recon and a tank, so Orange Star will be taking the vehicle advantage. Continuing to capture, and you see that development of that black boat. I wonder what that's for. Perhaps he's scouting with it. Although black boats do not have a very impressive vision range, and you can see right here, this recon spotted that black boat. The tank came in to take a shot. Did not do any damage. However, what you can see here is that this black boat is actually now going to be more or less trapped by this tank. It will not be able to get cross and will, of course, be stuck behind enemy lines like this. So Blue Moon will not be able to use it to deploy its infantry any further. However, Blue Moon does have a tank that is deploying more forward to the center area, whereas Orange Star's tank is, of course, off to the side here. Orange Star is going to have to move it and do something else with it. I doubt he's going to keep it here firing on this black boat. Whereas Orange Star is more using their black boats to transport infantry uh, horizontally to the left and right, Blue Moon attempted to go up and down with theirs to scout with it and got themselves trapped. Now 
Now a recon out from Sonya. Interesting choice, although on a map like this, it makes sense that you want to see across this river here. And boy, does this recon do that. That's a lot of vision range, and this recon is safely tucked away in this forest here, so we'll see just how much information Sonya is able to get from her recon. And an artillery out of Lash, slowly deploying. It will do well on one of these properties here, using Lash's day-to-day -day bonus to get increased damage, although Blue Moon's really going to have to capture these properties first before the artillery should deploy on it. Orange Star has now taken a slight income advantage, 14,000 to 13,000. And a good engagement from Orange Star here. You can see Orange has captured both their comm tower and their city, whereas Blue Moon has not quite yet captured the city. These two infantry come in, and this is an excellent interrupt out of them. We'll see just how long Orange Star is able to deny this property to Blue Moon. Havix turn around. They begin to capture on this side of the property, on this side of the river. You can see Blue Moon has already captured this property here, whereas Orange Star has not quite captured this property on this landmass. And this recon comes in to interrupt, and there is nothing in this area that can potentially counter this recon. Of course, over here, there is nothing on this side of the map that could potentially counter this recon. So we've still got a fairly even matchup, with the big deciding factor being this uncaptured property in the middle here. Orange Star's turn again, and we see a tank deploy. It will be a turn or two. Yes, just one single more turn before it is able to hit this recon. So Blue Moon is going to have to make the most of it and perhaps pull it back. With a recon, two tanks, and an artillery in this area, Orange Star has a firm lock on the center of the map. But that potentially comes at the expense of not really having anything to counter this recon and now this tank over here. Orange Star able to move their black boat through their tank, of course, to get to the other side and continue along the river. Blue Moon's black boat still stuck here behind this tank. So very well played by Einpunkt, trapping Blue Moon's black boat right here, denying its usage to the enemy. That is a good engagement from Blue Moon here. A tank coming on the property, using Lash's day-to-day -day bonus to their advantage, and taking this enemy tank down to 2 HP. Sonya's got a decent amount of troops in a good formation here in the center, including using this black boat as a sort of defensive shield. Artillery fires on the tank, getting it down to 4 HP. Another tank comes in and finishes it off, and they even begin the capture on the property. Now, I very much doubt if Orange Star is actually going to be able to capture this property. However, in threatening to do so, they are essentially forcing Blue Moon to send one or multiple units to interrupt this capture. We've got a battle copter out of Orange Star and deployed forward to hit this infantry. And there's an anti-air from Blue Moon, potentially within range to take out this chopper. We have another battle copter out of Blue Moon, which they will now be deploying this turn. Interesting that we have mechs in the exact same position on this map here. We'll see how long these mechs and these build orders tend to mirror each other. Battlecopter goes down. What an excellent trade out of Blue Moon. Just as soon as Orange Star brings that Battlecopter into the fight, Blue Moon takes it out. Good hit on the artillery, taking it down to 6 HP. Battlecopter comes over here, hits this tank, bringing it down to 5. Blue Moon is quickly establishing dominance on this landmass here, on this side of the map. Whereas Orange Star is simply not able to contest this landmass as well. The capturing infantry down to 3 HP, so Blue Moon has effectively captured it. Or rather, interrupted the capture from Orange Star. Another 2 HP infantry here. So we could see a lot of dead Orange Star infantry soon enough.
not one, not two, but three artillery bases built from Orange Star in the center here with a fourth one, which is currently engaged by this recon. So a lot of artillery out of Orange Star compared to Blue Moon's one and a counter break from the Sonya. Of course, any attacks that Lash makes against her next turn, Sonya will actually be able to get the first hit in. That is Sonya's Super CO power. So we'll see exactly how Lash deals with that. Of course, the artillery is a safe bet as it cannot fire back. Lash pulling back that infantry there on a more defensive position on the mountain. That is a painful engagement. Indeed, that Orange Star tank is able to get two hits in, two first strikes in on those attacking tanks. It goes down to 5 HP, but it is effectively able to deal a lot of damage in return. Good usage of that Sonya ability. Infantry fires first, does no damage, the recon's able to take it out so that invading infantry is eliminated. That was an excellent CO superpower from Sonya here, but Lash was able to very effectively play around it while taking a few hits in return. Black Belt goes down to artillery, focus it down, eliminating it from the fight. Black Boats are, of course, not combat units. They're not able to do much of any damage. Well, they're not able to do any damage, but their utility as a transport is now gone. One Black Boat is destroyed. We have one more remaining. One interesting to note about this map is that there are no ports on this map. So these black boats do not have a place to refuel and they do not have a place to repair. Now, of course, because you have two black boats, they can refuel and repair each other, but that means they need to interact with each other to do that. There is not a port that you can safely park these guys on to heal or refuel them. So that is also a very unique feature of this map. Once you lose one of your black boats, your other one is guaranteed, if nothing else, to run out of fuel eventually. So we will see if Blue Moon is able to make the most of this black boat they have remaining. Blue Moon begins the capture here, but it is day 12 and they do not have this center property. While they have complete dominance of the other landmass, and they are beginning to push into Orange's territory. And they have a very solid beachhead, they have a very solid foothold on this landmap here. They have yet to capture this central property. And yet despite that, they still have a 1000 income advantage over Orange Star. So clearly Blue Moon is doing something right with one more cap on the way, if they're able to get it in two turns if they can effectively defend this infantry. Artillery fires on this tank, this tank on zero stars of cover, bringing it down to one HP. This tank has not even gotten into the fight yet, and he must already be pulled back for repairs. Very well placed artillery and very excellent use of Lash's day-to-day -day from Havoc. Speaking of, Havoc is pushing with uh, making a mechanized assault here, able to make decent headway, eliminate some troops, and clear the way for the rest of his troops. We'll see if Blue is able to potentially capture this property here. Now Blue's AA moves all the way up, engages the mech, bringing it down to 1 HP. That is a very effective engagement here, but is also sitting on top of this property, effectively denying its usage to Orange Star. So Orange cannot make any copters this turn because of this AA. And a very excellent AA from Orange Star, despite the front line here, Sonya is able to put this AA close enough to Blue Moon's airport actually able to take down a battle copper and deny this airport's usage to Blue Moon for several turns. Any air, uh, any air power that Blue Moon builds on this airport will of course be very easy pickings for this AA and any sort of trade, this AA has already paid for itself, but any further trade will only make this AA even more cost effective. Another use of uh, Sonya's superpower and we'll see if Lash activates her prime tactics. However, because Sony has activated her counter break, perhaps Lash does not want to engage with Sonya on this turn, and I would not blame her. However, one also must question 
the utility of holding off on a CO superpower. Of course, when your CO superpower is charged, whether you decide to use it or not, you are not building up any further charge. Meaning, perhaps you want to wait another turn for a more opportune moment to use that superpower. However, you do have to weigh the pros and the cons, the costs and the benefits, because you will not be getting any further charge from either the damage you do or the damage you receive. So we'll see if that pays off for Lash. Lash, of course, not building up any charge because she's still at full. However, Sonya, since her power has deactivated, is already on her way to charging up another CO power. Good engagements here. Two tanks are able to do a decent amount of damage. Third tank comes in, secures the kill. All of these tanks are very badly damaged. However, Blue Moon does not have anything with which to counter push. So in fact, all of these vehicles are going to be able to pull back for repairs. Very excellent play there out of Sonya. However, the mechanized push from Blue Moon is beginning to make a bit of progress on this land here. And with Prime Tactics, Lash is going to make the most of it. This mech is going to get some good damage in on this artillery, bringing it down to 4 HP. Decent amounts of damage in, however, all these vehicles are so damaged that they're not doing their full damage potential in the first place. However, perhaps that is not the point of this push. Perhaps Blue Moon is more focused on taking this property here and one by one denying these properties to Orange Star, whereas Orange Star cannot even get the capture in on this property here. You see, Blue Moon does not have this central property, and I'm sure Blue Moon is hurting because of that. But Orange Star is also lacking this property here, evening things out a bit. Meanwhile, Blue Moon is making excellent progress on this left landmass. Orange Star threatening to capture Blue Moon's comm tower. Now, Blue Moon is certainly not going to let that happen. However, Blue Moon will need to divert at least one or several units to interrupt that capture and ultimately destroy this infantry here, which will form, uh, act as a distraction, perhaps distracting them from their other goals in the West or their defense of the East. Both sides making relatively equal amounts of progress. Blue Moon pushing halfway to Orange Star's HQ. And of course, Orange Star pushing halfway to Blue Moon's HQ. Orange Star certainly has more units to hold their HQ at. However, despite all these vehicles that Orange Star has on and near Blue Moon's properties, they do not have any infantry with which to actually capture this side of the map. So they can do a lot of damage and they can hold the line, but they will not actually be able to capture these properties, capture this airport, or threaten to capture this HQ. Meanwhile, Blue Moon has some infantry here, and this infantry squad can begin to capture this territory, or can even potentially threaten to capture this HQ, should Blue Moon make enough progress here. Black Boat down to 5 HP. Blue Moon trying to make the most of it. And we have a rocket out of Sonya. Of course, it was not able to fire. It had to move into position this turn. It had to get off the factory so that it did not base block. However, this is an excellent defensive position for a rocket because of the pipes, because of the mountains. No Blue Moon vehicles are going to effectively be able to get at it, going to be able to threaten it. It will, however, be able to fire in return and drive off all of these Blue Moon forces. We will see if Blue Moon retreats because of the firepower and the threat of damage that this rocket offers, or perhaps Blue Moon will just simply choose to charge through the fire and continue to deal as much damage as they can. Blue Moon has an artillery piece in a similar position here, denying these areas and the destruction of this lander and the capture of the HQ to Orange Star. However, it simply does not have the same range as a rocket. 
Blue Moon saying, consequences be damned. I am charging in here. I am going to do just as much damage to Orange Star as I possibly can, including six, eight, or four HP of damage to the lander on the HQ, bringing it down to six HP, making a potential capture of Orange Star's HQ just that much closer to reality. Rocket fires on the take, bringing it down to one HP, but does not secure the kill. Orange Star was, of course, not able to capture this comm tower. However, it does have a vehicle sitting on it, denying this area to Blue Moon, but Blue Moon doesn't care. They're making and continuing to make progress on the western landmass, and despite being a little bit overrun by Orange Star's troops over here, uh, they do still have the income advantage. 19,000 to 16,000, a three property advantage over Orange Star, and that is even without this central property here. The lander goes down, AA on the headquarters, fires on the mech, takes no damage in return, bringing it down to one. This tank comes in, secures the kill. Orange Star looking extraordinarily vulnerable here. Yes, they have two rockets, but this one is going to have to clear off the factory so as not to base skip. Meaning one rocket to engage one, two, three, four, five, six different, potentially seven different Blue Moon vehicles. A counter break out of Sonya. However, a lot of Sonya's troops are very low on HP as it is, so we'll see how effective that counter break really is. However, these two tanks coming in, dealing a decent amount of damage. Two repairs on this tank, bringing it up to seven HP. Goes in, hits the other tank, brings it down to three HP. Three comes in, brings it down to two. However, these are some very vulnerable, uh, very vulnerable tanks out of Orange Star next turn. However, Orange Star has been doing a good job of keeping their troops alive, even when they are heavily damaged, pulling them back and repairing them, including excellent usage of these black boats. The recon here is not able to do a lot of damage, but it will provide excellent vision and a prime tactics to counter out that counter break from Lash. Ooh, the counter break is able to get in, deal a decent amount of damage, but the tank does not care. It secures the kill. Two AAs pushing in on Orange's factory here. These troops are very far forward. They're perhaps stretched a little thin. They are, however, very much threatening these rockets here. Very much threatening these factories. However, Orange is going to get some good trades in here. Spot the tank, bring it down to 7 HP. Although Sonya, I bet, is indeed wishing that she was able to do a little more damage. Sonya cursing her bad luck here. Meanwhile, Blue Moon is making an effective counterattack on the eastern landmass. Orange Star is being forced to pull back and form more defensive positions here. Orange Star still denying the capture of this property to Blue Moon, but Blue Moon still has the income advantage. Recon takes out the artillery. This artillery is down to 2 HP, which will not be able to do a large amount of damage next turn. And Orange Star, interestingly enough, last turn decided to base skip by firing with this rocket. However, it did a decent amount of damage, and saving the funds on this property actually allows Sonya to build herself a medium tank. Now, I am not normally a fan or proponent of base skipping, however, it does seem that Einpunkt has been able to make the most of it, and Orange Star, grinding away, has slowly been able to capture these two properties, just now capturing this one this turn. Pushing in, taking down that 7 HP artillery. And another refuel on the black boat, so that the black boat can come over here and get a repair in on this artillery. Excellent use of the black boats this match. Orange Star taking more defensive positions on the western landmass to get some repairs in on these troops. 
not wanting to venture too far forward, but instead opting to heal his infantry back up. Blue Moon seeing the writing on the wall over here and pulling back to more defensive positions until she can build up again. But a medium tank of their own goes in and does 9 HP of damage to this tank, bringing it down to 1. This artillery will not be able to deal a large amount of damage in return. It is only down to 3 HP. We'll see what this medium tank does in response. Gets the first shot in, bringing it down to 5. Five counterattacks bringing it down to seven. However, a second medium tank threatening from Orange Star here. Sonia finally deploying this rocket a little further forward. We'll see just how far she decides to bring it up. This property starting to look a little free and clear for Blue Moon. They just got to clear off the tanks. Blue Moon, unfortunately, uh, does not have much in the way of units to clear off not one but two tanks and an artillery Blue Moon opting to take the shot on the artillery bringing it down to 2 HP so it will no longer be too great of a threat These units in the center here will be extremely vulnerable to a potential tank rush from Blue Moon from one and two tanks Blue Moon deciding to pull back and get their repairs in while they can. Another counter break from Sonya here. Excellent vision and can of course see into uh, forests and extra vision in the fog of war. But the real benefit of counter break comes from your troops hitting back first when they are attacked. So we'll see just how that plays out on Lash's turn next turn. Orange Star finally making a bit of progress over here and finally getting the income advantage over Blue Moon. But at what cost? It has been a significant grind. One HP tank coming back for repairs. That is, of course, a wise decision. This is a relatively small map, so Sonia does not need a bunch of troops spread out to provide her with a bunch of vision. Merely maintaining a front line will provide her with adequate vision of the front line and of her enemy's forces, allowing her to pull a couple troops back for repairs like so. But a prime tactics, and that tank is able to go in and take out that artillery. And a battlecopter that Orange Dark does not have an answer to for at least another turn. One medium tank still at 8 HP, you know, a bit damaged, but their other one is down to 2 HP that is dangerously close to getting destroyed. Day 24, Sonya's turn, that rocket fires, bringing that tank down to 3. Interesting placement of the rockets, they are very vulnerable there on the Zero Star Cover Shoal. However, given the layout of the map, as troops cannot traverse on these ocean tiles here, that means one flank of these rockets is secure, with a black boat in front and a tank on this flank here. These rockets are actually rather secured. Orange Star continuing to advance, making great progress. Orange Star has lost their defensive lander on their HQ, however Blue Moon's is down to 5 HP. So that will buy Blue Moon at least one more turn. Blue Moon's AA moves up, gets in some damage on that infantry. Two tanks and an infantry begin to deploy a bit further forward to retake their peninsula. A lot of interesting choices for targets for these rockets. We'll see exactly what Sonya decides to fire on. She goes for the tank, bringing it down to 1 HP, and begins to capture the comm tower. We'll see what Blue Moon does to interrupt that. Tank on tank, bringing Blue Moon down to 1 HP there. Medium tank fires on the tank, bringing it down to 5. Recon on recon destroys it. Leaves that medium tank on the property to repair back up. 
Ornstar continues to aggressively advance on Lash. Both sides still relatively equal on income. And you can see Blue Moon actually decided to destroy this pipe seam here, giving easier and quicker access for their troops to traverse through this passageway. Blue Moon making the most of that, moving that medium tank in, bringing that infantry down to 2 HP, it will no longer be able to capture, thus denying the capture to Orange Star. Blue Moon, of course, does not want to lose any more properties. They do not want to see their relative parity in uh, daily income slide even further into Orange Star's favor. But Orange Star is actually able to capture the second comm tower, giving them a 20% firepower boost. Now keep in mind, Sonya, of course, because of her bad luck, does actually have on average 10% less damage. So that comm tower is only going to be effectively canceling that out. However, a Sonya with two comm towers is still a very scary thing. A third rocket from Orange Star. Traversing down that road, that road is excellent for rockets to make their way all the way down, up to the front. Three rockets out of Orange Star. Orange Star feeling very confident in their ability to utilize and defend these rockets. The recon advances onto Blue Moon's home land landmass, providing excellent vision of that middle factory. Orange Star builds three infantry this turn in order to press home their advantage, and Blue Moon, seeing the writing on the wall, resigns. So, very well played from both of our players. The game made it all the way to day 26, with Einpunkt as Sonya defeating Havoc as Lash, Orange Star reigning victorious. Now let's take a look at the stats. Sonya able to generate 363 in income this game. Lash able to generate actually 386, 23,000 more gold than Sonya this match. However, despite having the income advantage for the majority of the match, Lash did take much more significant losses, as we can see here, and Sonya was able to make better trades. Despite Sonya's bad luck and despite Lash's day-to-day -day power, Sonya made excellent use of her counter-break ability and played very conservatively with their units, pulling them back to repair when necessary, rather than pressing their luck too hard and overextending. Einpunkt was also very effectively able to utilize the black boats on this map for constant repairs and constant refueling and constant rearming. We can see here, despite losing 12 infantry this match, Sonya was actually able to take over 22,000 in value damage on their infantry this turn, meaning lots of damaged infantry that Sonya was able to keep in the fight. Again with the tanks, despite losing 12 tanks, that is 84,000 in value right there, Sonya actually took over 108,000 in value damage on their tanks, i.e. Sonya was able to take damage, bring those tanks back, repair them, keep them alive, and get them back into the fight. Similarly, despite losing only one recon, Sonya was able to take 10,000 in value damage on their recons. That is the value of two and a half recons. And there is, of course, a similar story with the artillery, with the mech, and especially with the medium tank. You can see Sonya lost no medium tanks, medium tanks costing 16,000 gold. And yet Sonya was able to take over 19,000 in value damage on their medium tanks. You can see that's four damage on this medium tank here, six damage on this medium tank here, and by pulling these tanks back again and again, repairing them, keeping them alive, and then getting them back into the fight, Sonya was able to maximize the value of her troops and get three or maybe even four medium tanks worth of value out of only two medium tanks. We can also see here that Sonya was able to get four superpowers off this game, 
where Lash was only able to get three. Now there was that turn where Lash decided to hold back on utilizing her power because she did not want to play into Sonya's counter break. Perhaps that was the right decision, perhaps it ended up costing Lash in the end. However, I will point out that perhaps if Lash had used her superpower earlier, even though it was not an ideal time to do so, then she may have been able to charge up a fourth superpower this match, and that might have been the thing that made the difference. So, very well played, it was a back and forth match. Thank you once again to our players, and thank you for joining us. I do hope you enjoyed yourself. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. If you're not, well then I hope you enjoyed yourself, and if you did, then perhaps consider subscribing so you can see a little bit more from us. If you liked the video, then hey, leave a like on the video. And leave a comment down below telling me what you thought about the match. This is a very unique map. Have you ever played it before? What are your thoughts on it? And what would you have done differently this game? I do hope you enjoyed yourself, and if you did, then check out these recommended videos as well, including my entire Advance Wars by Web playlist. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining us, and I'll see you in the next one.